Hey what's up guys it's Cross Chaos here back with another video today showing you how to add shadows to pre-existing shadows in Adobe After Effects. So I'm assuming you already have base footage uh, that has a shadow in it that you want to add something to. So say I have this shot here, this person's shadow being cast on this wall. And let's say this monkey, the outline of this monkey was not there in the shadow and I wanted to add it. Let me show you how to do that. And I'm not going to show you that by adding this monkey because it's already in the shot. This is just the base footage right now. But for now, let me just play for you this little snippet of the scene. Yes, pretty, gr pretty, gr pretty gruesome. Uh, I, it doesn't have sound effects or anything, but whatever. The trick that's being used is, as you can see, you probably noticed this monkey has a tail that seems to be controlling itself. And this wasn't done with strings or anything. That would look a lot stupider if we tried to use strings with this monkey. This monkey actually did have a tail that I had to paint out and add this part of the shadow, which is indeed uh, not part of the shot if I can zoom in. It's actually, I did a very good job. Um, there's slight color variation there. This is more gray, this is more green. And I could probably fix that just with some color grading if I wanted to. You could see at some points, we can tell that there's some outlining going on, but overall the effect is pretty convincing, especially in motion. Um, <laughs> It really looks like it, what's supposed to be happening here is the monkey's using its tail to wrap itself around uh, his neck, pulling him in, and then biting his throat. I think it's pretty hilarious. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. So, moving on. How did I do this? So, um, this is going to be a mix of things I've already showed you before and new things. So, if you haven't seen my tutorial on masking out complex objects. Uh, you might want to see that just to get some context for what this is, but I'm going to re-explain it to a certain extent anyway. This is your base footage uh, at the bottom. These blood layers you don't need to worry about. Uh, and then this is the shadow layer. Whatever you want to add, whatever you are adding to your shadow is here. Now uh, this is a pre-composition. I'm going to explain why it's a pre-composition and not just a series of layers. So going into this pre-comp, uh, uh, I'm going to turn on this background just to see what we're looking at. We have the base footage again, and we have the actual thing that's being added as a shadow. In my case, I used 3D Stroke to draw a tail. And you can see how the tail is drawn. I just drew with the pencil, uh, the pen tool up here. Uh, I just drew and animated a tail. And then I had 3D Stroke, which is a trap code plugin, uses it as a reference. You could see that as I move the line, 3D Stroke moves the stroke along with it. You don't need to use 3D Stroke since you may not be trying to achieve the same effect anyway, but I have that creating the thing that I'm wanting to add to my shadow, and I have a Gaussian Blur effect kind of blurring it like the existing shadow would be blurred, as you can, uh, oops, as you can see that it's kind of like the edge is sort of blurred which would happen in real life it's it's likely that the shadow you're working with is at least a little bit blurred along the edges and if so even if it's kind of sharp like this the shadow is kind of sharp relatively speaking it's not like a really soft shadow but it's still got so it's kind of soft around the edges still so yeah you, you got to match that i just put in eight and that works pretty well uh and other than that there's nothing else on this layer uh, i'm just going to rename this added shadow just so it's easier to see what i'm doing here so this is the thing that's being added this is the base footage on top of it now what's this being used for this is a reference to tell this layer where to show up and where not to and the way it's doing that is by using a luma mat similar to what we learned about in the how to mask out complex objects video except we did that in premiere pro in after effects it's a built-in feature not just like effects that you need to add uh we have tr this track mat thing here and we can use this to use that as a track mat and then whatever layers below it can reference that track mat and we can do a whole lot of cool things with this so if we set this to luma mat it will tell this layer that has our added shadow what parts of the base footage are dark 
and what parts of the base footage are light. And we can visualize this if I just uh, make this layer visible. So if I get rid of the added shadow and get rid of the background for a second, we can see this is the base shot, but with a threshold effect added to it and also a Gaussian blur. Now let me explain the threshold. Let me hide the Gaussian blur for a second and explain the threshold. So the threshold effect essentially, if uh, depending on what you set it to, will change the entire scene to black and white, not any other values. It's just, you can see down to the pixel, it's, it's completely dark or completely white. And that's beneficial for our purposes because we're trying to not let our added shadow overlap with the shadow that's already in the shot because then we would kind of mix values and you would be able to tell that it's fake. Um, but here with this threshold, we can see where the shadow in the real shot ends. We're using this as a reference for this added shadow layer using the track mat. And this layer needs to be hidden, obviously, so you don't see it. And look at that. So where that previous shadow was ending now is cutting. That's the cutoff point for our added shadow. And we can see there's the uh, space between the monkey's arm, which is right here, and its leg, which is right here, it's showing through. Uh, and we've got these little spots, and that's just like the texture on the wall. It's picking up the texture. It's a bit obvious. Like, you can see there's some very harsh edges there. We just got pure white, pure black. But if we add a Gaussian blur, it kind of gives us some, uh, it kind of smudges everything. So that's what I used. I just used the threshold effect, but then I put a Gaussian blur after it to kind of blend everything together so it's not so grainy and harsh looking. So let me get this back to the way it was. And look at that. It looks a lot better. It looks a lot more uh, like the rest of the shadow that's actually there. That's the first step. Now, how do we get this to actually look like it's in the shot? So it might be, there may be several different situations where you might find the shadow is overlapping something else in the scene or needs to be behind something else. And that's the reason why this shadow layer is pre-comped because I have another layer mask applied to the pre-comp, which is currently masking out this post here, the shadow goes behind this post and if I didn't have this mask you could see the shadow shows over it which doesn't make any sense that makes it look fake so I added this mat this mask on this pre-comp layer that has the shadow stuff in it that way I could invert it it's on add right now so if you invert that it's subtract which I guess I didn't have to do I guess I could uninvert it and then just set it to subtract which would do the exact same thing I don't know why I, I do some things in weird ways but that's just removing the part of the shadow that is overlapping the post so it makes it look like it's not actually in front of the post it's behind the post which is more convincing because that's where the shadow would be if it's being projected on this wall so that's why it's in a pre-comp you don't have to have yours in a pre-comp but if you need that if there's something that's in front of the shadow you're trying to add at any point in the shot pre-comp all of your layers and then apply a mask, two masks, three masks, however masks you need to apply so that it looks spatially convincing. And let's see, what else is there to talk about? Uh, turbulent displacement. This is actually something I only realized today when I was preparing for this video and I was looking at this project trying to figure out what I was doing. I actually noticed that the sides of the the edges of my shadow that I added are a bit too clean. They're blurred, but they're too clean. Uh, and I don't know if you can notice that. Like with the, sh with the sides of this shadow here, you can see there's like pieces of the shadow that are kind of rigidy, even though it's blurred on the edges. You can still see there's kind of like some fringing along the edges there. And that's because this wall, cinder blocks, whatever you call it, it's got a texture on it to where there's like a lot of grain and that's causing the sides of these shadows to fringe. The way to emulate that I found to be the best way at least uh, was just put a turbulent displacement, just pre-comp the whole shadow layer or all of the shadow layers that you have, uh, pre-comp it, and just put a turbulent displacement effect over it and you could see that kind of adds some fringing to the edges that matches the background texture of the wall that it's being displayed on that it's being cast on and i just have this set to the, the, the size is very small because if i were to turn this up it's like gets really wavy which is you know this is the default but if you turn it all the way down it just makes it look more more like graininess rather than waves which is good for 
the purposes of this. And then the amount changes how much fringing there is. So if we turn it all the way up to 1500, obviously that doesn't look right because none of the rest of the shadow that's actually in the shot matches that. So uh, I found 125 to be a pretty good uh, value. And that might actually even be too much. I'm looking at it again. Uh, sometimes this will happen. You'll you'll think you have it set up correctly and then you'll look at it again a few minutes later and you're like, uh, eh, maybe even less. 50. No. 75 is fine. And in motion, you don't really notice. So if I'm looking back at this. <laughs> I love how After Effects changes the pitch of things. If it's playing really slowly. Yeah, when it's in motion, even with all those things, if you don't have it exactly perfect, if your value isn't exactly perfect, sometimes it doesn't matter because in motion, you don't notice. Like that looks really good. And the thing that's really selling it, other than the things I've already shown you, is for one, the motion blur. So like here you can see there's some motion blur along the edges. So this part, this part here that's not moving as quickly as this part, which is like swinging around, uh, aren't as blurred as this. And the way you do that is just by turning on the motion blur here. So this is motion blur simulate shutter duration. If you turn these buttons on, that turns on motion blur for those particular layers. So just make sure you have motion blur turned on for your added shadow layer. So that makes it 10 times more realistic just by adding the motion blur. Now, another thing you should do is just to make sure that your value of the shadow that you're adding is similar enough to the value of the pre-existing shadow to where there's not like a obvious cutoff. So the way I controlled how dark the shadow is. So I guess I should explain this just so it's not so confusing if you try using this method with the track mat. This track mat, this Luma mat, is copying essentially the luminosity of this layer. That's the that's the easiest way I can describe what's happening here. So if this layer is 60% opacity, then this is going to copy that resulting brightness. If I change this opacity, if I make this 25, you can see now our shadow is a lot lighter. And if we go back to our base footage, doesn't matter if we've got all that motion blur on it. Doesn't matter if it's tracked into the shot. Doesn't matter if it's got the proper compositing done to it to make sure that this post is overlapping it. It's not the same value. So you can see it's obviously there's a, there's a cutoff there. There's a cutoff here. It doesn't match. It's not going to look real. If your value does not match, it's not going to look real regardless. So 60 was good. And if we go back, now it blends. So other than that, what else is there to talk about here? <laughs> I love how the shot turned out. I did this in two hours, I think. Uh, and the other shot was uh, mm, the same character. Cooper is his name, the, the sock monkey. Uh, he gets thrown in an oven. And I thought that was pretty cool. I did that in a very quick manner as well. I think the visual effects that I did for this film are the quickest I've ever done. Let me let me try and if I'm not going to post the short film to my YouTube channel, then I might as well just show the one I was referring to. This is the shot I did after I did the shadow one, and this took me like an hour and a half maybe. For some reason the camera track was not entirely uh, usable for the smoke but it worked fine with the fire element. Don't know why that was happening and I don't didn't really care to try and fix it. But in motion it looks pretty good still. Looks pretty convincing to me. So yeah I, I think that's pretty much it. That's all there is to go into as far as how I pulled off this effect I think. So other than that, if you've got any other questions, just put it in the comment section. Uh, I see most comments. I'm still a small enough channel to where I don't get comments too often. So if I get a new comment, I usually get notified and I see it. And if it's something like a question, I, I usually am able to respond. I might not always respond right away, but I'm, uh, I usually see notifications for each comment I get. But uh, anyway, guys, I will see you all later. Bye-bye.